everybody. Happy Sunday. So we've had about every uh, season, I think, that we could have this weekend. So we started out, you know, with winter yesterday <laughs> here in Iowa. I have a lot of new people, so I live in Iowa. And yesterday we started out with snow. And in some places, we didn't have only about three inches here, but some of the places just east of us had like a lot more. And then, and then, you know, it got up to like 60 yesterday afternoon. So then, of course, all the snow melted. <laughs> So it was spring yesterday afternoon. So, you know, just wait five minutes and the and the uh, weather will change. So so how is everybody today? We're going to do a little software today. I always enjoy software classes. They're like my favorite. And um, we're going to make this little banner. And um, it's a really cute little spring banner. I just thought that would just be something different. I thought maybe we'd make one for each season so we could hang them up. And um, I did the spring one first. Hi, Teresa. So all, all kinds of folks. So we have a lot of new people in the group. So if this is your first time to sew along with Jan on Sunday nights, welcome, everybody. So I've had a lot of people join in the last couple of weeks and um, a lot of people from YouTube and other Facebook groups. So welcome if you have are new. So, and we remember we're going to have a drawing at the end. So um, every Sunday night when we have class, we have a drawing at the end. And um, it, the, only, the way you, you know, the way you get into the drawing is to comment. So make sure you comment during the class and ask questions and comment. Then you get, uh, you get to uh, be entered into the drawing. And this week's drawing is something fun that I did a while ago and I haven't done these for a while, so we'll have to do them again. But um, I made a whole bunch of these little um, the little bags with the um, the wraps. So like this is, this is a uh, Doritos wrapper and you can do candy wrappers and all kinds of different things with, um, with with these you can do you know candy wrappers this time of year with the spring like the easter candy it's really they have a lot of cute pretty wrappers on their candies and stuff so this one was a little doritos bag and i always like to keep like um, my usb sticks and stuff in these so this is one <laughs> one of the little bags i made for, for out of a doritos bag and you put um you put um vinyl fuse over the actual bag and it's two fronts of the bag and you can put the back on if you want. I usually put two fronts on and then, yeah, so the, the spring candies have lots of really cute, um, really cute bags now. So you might want to, you know, collect some bags and keep them because then you can make, make these. So, um, I really do like these. These are fun to do. And I did this partially with the Luminaire Dream Machine in Design Center. We did the decorative stitching in there and then I just sewed them together. So anyway, that was a, that was a fun little project we did a while back. We'll have to do some more of those. We haven't done any for a long time. So but that'll be the prize tonight is, a, is my little Doritos bag. OK, so make sure that you comment um, during the class and then I will pick a winner. So, okay. And then I wanted to tell you what I've been working on today. I've been teaching all day because I've been um, working on the uh, Life is Better in Full Bloom pillow. I told everybody I was going to start it as soon as I could. I had to get my taxes done first, so I got that. And uh, let me turn the banner off here real quick so I won't forget. I'm just thinking about it right now. There we go. And uh, so this is the pillow. Life is better in full bloom. Hopefully you can see it. I have a little bit of a yellow light here. So let me turn this. There we go. So this is the new Kimber Bell pillow. And um, so I have done three videos and all of the blocks are done. So I'm really excited about it. Also, I got some of the blocks here to show you. So like here's the first one with the little watering can. Let me turn this down so you don't get a glare. The little watering can and get fringe and chenille. And let's see, then we did, uh, what did we do? Oh, we did the, the little um, paper pieced flowers. And then you make, you put, make little bow, little uh, leaf bows to put on them. So I haven't got those um, on yet. Okay. So there's three of those. There's three different colors. And then we did, um, let's see, mushrooms, the little mushrooms. These are dimensional. I didn't use a kit. Um, I actually just used fabric that I had. So um, you can get kits. There's people that have kits, though. And then here's the little butterfly. So I just I just um, 
I just been doing um, using the fabric I had at home. And then here's Life is Better in Full Bloom. This is the main block. So this is fun. They really cute. Um, I don't know if you can see it very well in the camera. Can you see the dimension of the, that's a really cute uh, quilting design. Any tips or tricks? Well, I, I mean, Lynn, I'm going to be, I did, a, I'm doing videos. So I'll have all my tips and tricks in five videos for you for the whole thing. So here's the little birdhouse and here's the Dresden flower. And then the last one I did was the pinwheels and oh my gosh, look at the little, the little fringe uh, caterpillar at the bottom. Oh my gosh, it was so much fun. So I, I did try out the um, water soluble thread for the bobbin and oh my gosh, does that work well? So you have to wet it, but, um, but it was so fun. So this is what I've been doing the last few nights, one night and a couple of uh, evenings yesterday, I did a video and I did one today. So, um, but I'm, so I'm going to be ready to do the flanges and the borders in the next video. And then I will put it together and then I'll put all the videos up all at the same time. So there'll be five videos. A um, couple of them are a little long. I'm sorry. Cause you know, there's a lot, a lot of to the block. So it takes a little while and, um, and then uh, we'll put it together and I think it'll be lots of fun. So that's, that's coming up in the next, probably this next week, it'll be a few days yet till I get everything written up and put up and all the stuff in the descriptions. But I wanted to let you know what I've been working on. I've been working on my, my pillow. So I've been wanting to make that. And there's one more I want to do. I want to do the, um, the welcome spring, the big bench pillow that, um, well, I'm on a different camera. I don't know who said that the camera seems fuzzy. Oh, is it Denise? I am on a different camera tonight, Denise. This is just the one on my laptop. So um, it's not the same as my other camera. So I just, I don't need a camera tonight because I'll be sharing my screen with you. So this is just the regular camera I'm in my laptop. It is a little bit, it's not as good a camera. So, okay. And um, and then I'm going to do the, the welcome spring pillow. That is the big bench pillow. It's the one with the little rain boots on it. So that's the other one I want to do. And I, I'm going to, I have to get that cut out. I have a kit for that one, but this, this was not a kit. This was just fabric I had. So, all right, so let's get started. I'm going to show you the a picture of the banner. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. Um, and I will show you a picture of the banner. It's hanging up above my, <laughs> way up close to the ceiling. So I didn't want to take, take it down. I had to go get a ladder to take it down. So it's up above my um, cutting table over here. Um, but I have a good, pretty good picture of it. So, all right, so let me get, get um, well, it's under present now. You have to share your screen. Give me just a second here. Entire screen. Okay. So you should be able to see my screen here in a minute. So I put the picture of the um, of the banner up, and um, this is what we're going to make tonight. These are these are really fun to do. I just I just wanted to do something different, and I really like to. Oh, I need to to um, get rid of me, don't I? Just a moment. I'll get rid of me. I have to click the button down here. There's another button that you have to click to get rid of your the person talking. There we go. Now you can see just the screen. Um, but this, I just thought this would be something fun. And then I thought we'd do one for each. Um, what felt did you use? I just used uh, felt from Hobby Lobby. But I did use water soluble, um, the water soluble uh, stabilizer. And then I dipped it. I, I don't like to dip things, but I do these because it makes the banners nice and stiff. So that they hang nice and they don't look wrinkly and stuff. So I did just use regular felt from Hobby Lobby. It was kind of a cream color and uh, you can use any color you want. And then I um, went ahead and dipped those and that water soluble kind of makes like a starch, you know, so it makes it stiff. So they do, there are, they are not, they have nice body to them. So, okay. So if I give me a second here, let me minimize this. We might need to come back and look at the picture again. Bring my software up. And we're we're going to be working in um, Perfect Embroidery Pro. So the Dime software, Perfect Embroidery Pro. You do need to have the full version to do this project because it is, um, it's going to be digitizing. We're going to be doing some drawing and, and stuff like that. So like the free version won't do what we're going to do. But in the comments, so as soon as I... Um, I, we get done and in the 
Um, I did a picture of this in the on the group too, and also in the Dropbox. There are just the the um, sewing designs, so just the PES designs of this. So if you just want to sew it out and you don't want to digitize it, or you don't have the software, that's fine. I've got PES files up there, so you can just sew it out. Okay, hi Clara. So we are going to have a little fun. I love digitize. These are like my favorite classes. So I I just love to just sit and digitize things, fun things to make. And it gives, it's very satisfying to me to like make the project on the screen and then sew it out. You know, it's really, I just, it, it's very satisfying to me to, you know, to go from beginning to end. And um, so I always enjoy sewing them at the end and it's like, Hey, that's my design. It's so cool. You know? So anyway, so we're going to, we're going to make this little banner tonight. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our grid. And to do that, we're, I'm just going to right click up on here on the ruler bar up here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to show my grid settings because we do need to use the grid. And then we also need to use snap to grid tonight just for a little while. We're not going to use it the whole time, but we're going to use it part of the time just to help us get um, the shape of our pennant. Okay. So I want the size of my grid to be half an inch. So I already have that set up 0.5 inches by 0.5 inches. Okay. And then I want to click snap to grid and we'll, we'll turn this off after a while, but we're going to start with the snap to grid on. Okay. And then I'm just going to click. Okay. So then I'll have my half inch grid up here to help me know where things fit. And then um, it will snap to grid um, so that when I go to draw and stuff and then use my, um, tools to change the shape, then it will be easier and it will snap to the grid. Okay, so we're gonna start with the artwork tool and I'm just gonna draw a shape to start with. And we're not actually gonna use the shape as it is, we're gonna change it. And I wanted to, you to see that you can use a shape that's already in here, but then you can change it into a different shape from one you have. So we're gonna try the, we're gonna get the triangle. And I'm just going to draw a triangle. So I've got it on my, my cursor and I'm going to hold my mouse, my left mouse button down up here on the top kind of left. And I'm just going to hold it down. And I'm going to draw down to the bottom right. And it doesn't matter how big it is or anything. Okay. It's going to snap to my grid. All right. So there's a triangle. We just have a triangle. And then I want to transform it so that it's kind of equal, you know, it's, it's going to be five inches square. Okay. So I am going to go get my selection tool and I'm going to go over here to my uh, properties box and I'm going to go to transform. And by the way, if you have a bunch of icons up here and you want to be able to see the words, let me show you how to do that real quick. If you go to tools, general options, and then go to view, you can deselect, it says show property tabs as icons, you can deselect that, and then it'll just be words. I can read way faster than I can hover my mouse, so I, I like words, so <laughs> I deselected that. So if you wonder why yours have pictures here, you can do that if you like, so I always have to, I always have to have words, okay. So we're going to hit the transform tab up here in the properties box. And I'm going to I'm going to deselect the maintain aspect ratio because I may not have done very well with my my size. And I want the width to be 5 inches and I want my height to be 5 inches. So I'm just going to type 5 in both of those and I'm going to click apply. And then it makes my, my uh, triangle really large on my screen. So let's go ahead and just click, go up here to the zoom and go to fit. And that way you can see the whole triangle. So there's our triangle. So it's five inches wide and five inches tall. So that's how we're going to start. Now I want, you know, my pennant banner, I don't want it to be like a birthday hat. I want it to be the tip down, right? So I'm going to go ahead and flip this. And there's a flip tool right on the screen. And it looks like the little arrows are here. And this is called flip. So I'm just going to click the flip. And it's going to flip it over so that the points down. And that's the way we want to work with this. Okay. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and center it. It's not quite centered. So I'm going to go ahead and center orange in so that it's completely centered on my screen. And you can see that it's right on my grids. Okay. And um, it's five inches by five inches. Okay. Now I do want to change the shape. I thought the triangle would, the triangle would have been just fine. We could have just made it a triangle, but I wanted to show you that there are ways that you can change the shapes of something that you draw, like with an artwork tool and then make it custom. So we're going to make a custom shape for our banner. And I'm going to go get the shape tool to do that. So the second tool down on the left, first one's select. We use that a lot. And then the next one down is the shape tool. So this is going to allow us, if you can see here, to see the nodes where the points are of our triangle. So it starts and stops down here. And there's a node on each corner. So um, I want to add a point because I want my, my um, banner to have kind of a a uh, curved edge. So let me show you, let me quickly show you the picture of the banner. So you can see, so I want it to have kind of a curved edge here, but it's still going to have a point and it's going to have a curved edge and then it's going to be flat across the top. Okay. So we're going to make that out of this triangle. So I'm going to get my, whoops, let's get this back up here. I'm going to get my shape. I've got my shape tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the line that one like on the way down on the right hand side i'm just going to right click and i'm going to tell it to add a point so i'm going to add a point there so here's a point right here and i'm going to move this over so that it's a half an inch below the top corner and of course we have the snap to grid on so it's going to snap right over there for me so i'm just going to pull that node right over there and see how it just snapped right over there okay and then what I want to do is I would like it to be kind of straight there. So I don't know if you can see them real well, but there's these little blue handles. Okay. And they allow us to change the shape of this around this node. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab this top one and I'm going to pull it up so that it is perfectly straight against my grid line like that. Now see how it turned this into kind of a, curve then down here. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to go over to the other side. I'm going to go right on my line and I'm going to right click. I'm going to add a point. Okay. Then I'm going to pull it over to one half inch directly below my first point and it snapped to my grid. And then I'm going to take my little handle here and I'm going to pull in till it's perfectly straight up and down with the grid line or as close as I can get. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. You can leave them straight if you wanted. I just wanted my banner to look a little different. Okay. Then you can also change the lower part of this. Now, right now, this is a curve, okay? I don't know if you can see on the end of my cursor, there's a little round blue circle. That means that is it is a curve there. And you can adjust this too. So like if I take this handle and go like this, you can see I can adjust that as well, okay? But I want those to be straight. And I actually kind of like the shape of that. So I think it's pretty good. I'm gonna make sure that this is pretty straight here. And then I'm gonna click enter on my keyboard. And there is the shape of our banner. So our banner is a completely different shape now. We started out with a triangle and now we have this nice triangular shape with a curved side. So if you want to change these, like if you wanted to change this, you could change this. Um, and oh, like let's say if I right click on it again, see the word cusp? If I may use the word cusp, it would make that a straight corner. So like a squared corner, and then I could make it back into a triangle again if I wanted to. But I'm going to leave it curved, okay? Yeah, it's just different. I, I liked the curve, and I thought, well, let's just play. So we're going to make four of these. We're going to make 
um, spring, winter, summer, and fall. And then we'll do a different shape for our banner for each one. I thought that would be just a good way to learn how to do some different stuff uh, and make different shapes. So we'll make a different shape with the next one. Okay. So I think I'm happy with that shape. I like that. What do you think? I kind of, I kind of like that shape. Um, let's see. I have to, I'm, I wrote some notes for myself. So I remember where I was at. So, okay. So in order to do the banner, I'm going to kind of tell you the order that it will go. So the first thing that's going to stitch is going to be a placement line for the top piece of felt. And that's what this is that we just made. Okay. And then it's going to do a tack down line. That's also going to be our final trimming line when we go to trim out the banner. And then we're it's going to do the applique letter. And we're going to do an applique letter using... Um, uh, true type fonts. And then we're going to do a triple stitch outline that's going to be one quarter of an inch inside of this, okay, to hold it together. And then we're going to do some little, not buttonholes, but like little eyelets that are going to be at the top where you can put some ribbon through to hold the whole thing together, okay? So I just tied little ribbons. Let me show you again. Bring this up so you can see it. I just tied little ribbons through the holes here to, to hold it together. And then I made longer ones on the ends just so that I could um, hook it up on the wall. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. So that's, it's, that doesn't have a lot of steps to it. But we're going to learn a bunch of different things today. So this now, if we look over here in the sequence view, is actually just artwork. So that is not going to sew. This is just a picture. All right, so we need to make it into stitches first. So I want this to be a straight stitch because it's going to be our placement line for the top uh, felt. So I'm just going to right click. I have to go back and get my selection tool first. Okay. And I'm going to right click over here on the line. Hopefully I missed. There we go. Maybe it's being, there we go. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to convert to a run. And this is just going to be a standard straight stitch. So I'm going to leave it at the type standard. And I want to make it a little shorter stitch. Three is kind of long. So I'm going to make it 2.5. And then I'm going to click apply. So the very first one now, if I look in my sequence view now at the first color, it says it's now a run. So now we have an actual stitch file. Okay. So is this making sense to everybody so far? We we created our shape with an artwork tool. We reshaped it and now it is, we converted it into a run stitch so that it will actually sew on our machine. Okay. You know, I kind of liked it too. I wasn't sure. And I thought, you know, I just want to do something completely different. And I was just trying, and I, I looked up and I have uh, one from the Bella box. I have one of my banners that came in one of the Bella boxes. And I thought, hey, that was really fun. And it's really cute on my wall. And I might need a few more of those. So we're going to do some, some seasonal ones. Okay. So now this is the first piece that's going to be our placement line for the felt. We need a second line, just exactly the same size, that's going to tack down the felt once we lay it in the hoop, okay? This is being done in Embroidery Tool Shed, which is perfect Embroidery Pro, Lynn. Um, you, there's lots of different pieces of uh, Embroidery Tool Shed, but this is perfect Embroidery Pro. You do need to have um, one of the elements of Tool Shed that allows you to digitize. And perfect Embroidery Pro is their full digitizing software. So that's what I'm using, okay? Oh, yeah, I know. I just love to I just love to put these up. I just got them. I got it up on the wall. And I got one at the store, too. So I thought, you know, banners are good. It's just something different. You could make people's names. You could do, you know, and then you could take this one. Um, there are not written written instructions, Denise. I have some some sketchy notes here that takes me so long to do. I figure you have a video and you can stop and start the video. I have to write a few notes for myself. <laughs> Just so I know where I'm heading, okay? <laughs> so I just have some handwritten scribbled notes here that I'm looking on. <laughs> okay, so we need a second one of these. This one we need to have a tack down. So I'm going to 
um, select it over here in the sequence view. And I'm going to go up here to the top and I'm going to hit copy and paste. And it's going to have put another one. Now we have two runs down here, but I want it to stop in between because I need to put the fabric in. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and change the second one. That's the one that's selected. I'm going to go down to the bottom. Explain Snap to Grid, please. Oh, Snap to Grid um, allows the design to let me let me finish this part, Cindy, and I'll go back to that in a minute. OK, give me just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change the second run to the color number two. So I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to right click on the little color chip at the bottom. And see, now I have an, a first color and a second color, and they're different. The machine will stop in between, okay? So I need it to stop. It doesn't matter what color these are. You can put any colors in you want, okay? Yeah, you could do, I thought about doing Happy Easter, Jan, but it was too long. I didn't want to do that many letters. <laughs> so you can do you can do a Happy Easter one. What The, the size on my grid squares are half an inch. Now, Cindy's question was about, What's Snap to Grid? So what Snap to Grid does, let me turn my page so I'm ready for the next step here. Um, what it does is it makes everything go right to a grid line. So it like snaps it over. So like if I pull this over and I let go of things, they go automatically directly to a line. They don't, they don't stop in between the grids. Okay, so it goes right to a grid line. And it helps out, um, it helps out so that um, things stay together and um, are straight. That's, I use it a lot when I'm trying to get straight lines and stuff, so, okay? So that's what Snap to Grid does. Okay, so we have our placement line and our tack down line. Now the tack down line, I'm gonna just leave it as a, yeah, the dotted lines are my grid lines and those are half inch apart. You can see the dotted lines here, okay? Um, so I'm going to I'm going to leave the second run the same settings as the first because all that is going to do is just tack down my top fabric to my uh, wash away stabilizer like my sew and wash or what um, that I use sew and wash from um, Dime and um, I don't need to have it be like it's not going to be like a permanent it's it's not even going to show so we're also going to use that to trim our design out at the end. So it gives us the shape and we can just trim right along the line. Okay. So that's, I'm just going to leave it as the same. All right. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and turn off my snap to grid now because I, I need to play with some letters and stuff and I don't want to have the snap to grid on. So I'm going to right click again up here on the, on the ruler bar. And I'm going to go down here to where it says snap to grid. It's got the little check mark and I'm going to deselect it. So now there's no check mark there. Okay. And I'm just going to leave the grid up because that'll help me, but I don't need the, I don't need the um, snap to grid anymore. I use that to help me with these side panels. Okay. So now let's put an applique letter. So we're, you have to kind of think about how this is going to sew. We want to sew the applique and maybe the little flower. I put a little flower on it um, before we put the back on because we don't want any of that stitching to show on the back. So we're going to do that next. So this is going to, this is just, we're just sewing with regular bobbin thread and it's going to sew through the back of the stabilizer and then we'll put the back on last. Okay. So I am going to do an applique letter. So I decided I was going to do, um, we're going to use true type fonts and true types come in. Um, they're whatever does, um, lettering fonts you have on your computer that like work with other software and different things like that. Um, but your list will look probably different than my list. So it depends on what you have uh, installed on your computer. There's lots and lots and lots of free fonts out there that are true type fonts. Um, I go to Defont, D-A-F-O-N-T dot com a lot. They have tons of free fonts. So I have a whole bunch from there and you can just do any font you want. So we're going to use kind of a, a basic font for this one. Um, this time, but you can use any font you want. Okay, so to get my true type font in, I need to go to File, Import TT Text. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to click on that button, and then I'm going to type what I want to put in here. So I want to put the just a second here. I've got my 
phone turned up too loud. Um, I want to put the word, the letter S. So we're going to type out the word spring. So we're going to do S first. Okay. And I used the text. So here's your fonts available. And if you click on that little arrow, it'll show all the fonts that are available on your computer. So you can see I have a whole bunch of fonts. Okay. And I chose a simple font for this because I just liked this one. And, and I thought maybe other people might have it. It's a common font. So it's called Arial Rounded MT Bold. Okay. So it's kind of a bold one and it's rounded. It's not, it's not, um, you know, it's not angular. It's not very, it's just a real kind of a pretty rounded font. So I'm, I'm going to choose that one. It's kind of a bold one. And then I'm, I type my letter S in the word text because I just need the letter S. And then I'm going to click OK. And it's going to bring in a piece of artwork, the letter S. So if I looked over here in my sequence view, it says artwork again. So again, this is not going to sew yet until we finish working with it. OK. Now, I would like this to be two and a half inches tall. So I'm going to go. I've got it selected. I'm going to go to transform. Now I want to maintain my aspect ratio. So in other words, I want it to come up together, height and width. I'm going to click that box and then I'm going to bring up the height to 2.5 inches, 2.5. And then I'm going to hit enter or apply. Okay. So there's my S still just start work and I'm going to move it up just a little bit. We'll just kind of move it up here and then we may have to move it a little bit again, but I'm going to move it up so that it's a half an inch from the top of my banner. So remember these were half inch grids. So in the, on the first grid down from the top, so it's going to be about here and we may have to move it just a little bit and a little again, but then you kind of have it place where we want it. Okay. So I need to make this into a sewing stitch right now. It is not a sewing stitch. Right now, it's just artwork. So I want to make this. Remember, we said we we're going to make an applique out of this. So I'm going to click. It's select. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go convert to. And I want to use an applique. So I'm going to go applique. I want the width of my applique a little bit wider. So right now, we're in transform. I'm going to go to the little tab at the top that says applique because then I can change my applique information. Um, I want it to be the width, the applique width to be 4.0. So I want just a little wider. These were not real thick letters, so I didn't want a super thick um, applique out outline. I thought it might you know, be a little overwhelming, so I made them a little you know, basic narrow. Okay, And then the stitch length here means the stitch length for your placement lines and your tack down lines. And I like to be shorter than 3.5. So we're going to make them 2.5 for the stitch length. And then I like to inset my satin stitches so they so they um, sew slightly more in on the fabric than out or off the fabric. So the inset percentage is going to be 60%. So it's going to sew a little bit more in than out. And you can even go 70 if you want, but I'm, I did 60 seem to work fine for this. Okay. And then I'm going to look down here, the corner type bevel is fine for this because there's no corners because it's an S right. And I want a placement line. So I need to have that selected there. I want my tack down line to be a run. And that's fine. And let's see. Oh, and there's no holes in this letter. Now, there will be in another one that we do next. Um, so we don't need to check that on this one. But we want it to change colors. So I want the colors to change the placement line to be one color, the tack down line to be one color, and the applique to be a, a one color. That way, the machine will stop in between. So I'm going to click on change colors. All right. And then I'm going to click apply. And it's going to slightly change. It went a little wider. The satin stitch moved inward just a little. But I now I want to just check to make sure that my size of my letter is still at 2.5. It may be slightly larger now. So if I go back to my transform tab along the top here, it's kind of at the end. 
see the height says 2.64. So it is a little bigger because of the satin stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to type in 0 0.50 with my maintain aspect ratio checked and click enter or apply. And it came down just a hair. All right. So I do want to move this up a little bit because I said I wanted the top of it to be about a half an inch from the top of my banner. So I'm just gonna kind of move this up a little bit. And if you have trouble getting it to move smoothly with while just dragging it, if you hit the control key on your keyboard and your little arrow keys, it'll just bump it up a little bit at a time. And I like to use that just to get my, my perfect placement, okay? So the top of the S is one half inch, because remember our grids, one half inch from the top of the banner. Okay, so that looks pretty good, I like that. And if you look over in the sequence view now, um, if I click on the third color, which is, you know, which is the letter, all I can see is the word applique. Now, when I save this as a stitch file, it will make it into the separate steps because we know appliques have a placement line, a tack down line, and a covering stitch. In this case, it was satin, okay? So, um, but I'd like to see that as I'm working here, just so to, to give me, so I know where I'm going. So this is how you would do that. If I just go over here to my sequence view and I right click on the word applique, the little menu that comes up, see this little, the little words that say break up path. So if I break up my path, watch what it does to my appliques. So now if I look down here, placement line for the fabric, tack down line for the fabric. And then here's the placement line for my S, my tack down line for the S, and my satin stitch applique for the S. So it just broke that up so I can see all the pieces. So I know what where I'm going, okay? I often do that just because it helps me visualize and the steps and how many steps it has, okay? All right, so we have, and you notice that they changed colors. So like it's, it's color one, color two, and then back to color one. It doesn't matter what colors it is because you can put any colors in you want. Okay. All right. And let's see. I have to switch pages here because I had, oh, Lordy, I had I had uh, notes all over the place. So I had to come back and forth between, be, between things. So, and when I looked at it, I thought, well, it looks really cute, but it looks a little plain. Needed something down in this bottom point. And I thought, well, what we can put in there. And I thought maybe a little flower, something springy, right? So um, in the software, there are a bunch of really nice little small designs that are built right into the software. If you do not see these in your software, there is a file that you need to install. And it does not download all the time with the software. So if you don't have it, I have it and you can contact me and I can send it to you so that you can get this in there. But I'm going to go up here to my text designs and it's the, the T with the book. Okay. I'm going to click on that, just that T with the book and this little catalog of designs is going to pop up. And if you don't have this many designs, you don't have that little file. So contact me and I have a link to it that you can get it, okay? A lot of you have contacted me and I think a lot of you have it now. But this is a really cool little, little area because they have all kinds of small designs that you can choose um, to add to your designs. You don't have to digitize it. You can just use something you already have. And we're going to edit one. So we're going to go grab one. So the one I used was FL, so it's a flower. Flower 104. So it's under F. Here we go. Flower 10472. Okay. So this is a little orange flower here. I'm going to click on that and click OK down at the bottom. So here's my flower. So I'm just going to pull it down here to kind of get it out of my way of my S. Um, if you look at the right over here, that it, it is grouped. So right now, if I select, if I try to just select the leaves, it, it just selects everything. So we need to be able to get into that a little bit. So I'm going to ungroup it to start with. So we're going to go ahead and go over to the where it says group next to the flower. I'm going to right click on that in my uh, sequence view. 
and I'm going to go ungroup. So here's the ungroup button. Where I get the files, uh, Jackie, it's the text designs. So if you go to the top left-hand side, it's in the second toolbar down, and, and it's text designs. It's a T with a book. And you click on the T with the book, and then that, that um, window should open. I'm pretty sure I put that on your computer, so you should have them. Okay. All right. So now when I look over here at my flower in the sequence view, there are three pieces. So we have, you know, the leaves for the flower and then the flower and then the little center for the flower. Okay. So I thought I, I, I didn't really like the whole flower in there and you could leave it in there, but I decided just to use the top of the flower and the center. So by ungrouping it, I could go over here and I can just select the leaves and the stem in my sequence view and I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard and get rid of them. So there is my little flower now. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and regroup this together. So I'm going to select the two, the whole thing, the orange and the yellow. Let's see. The, I'm going to go, I have to go down a little bit because it's opened up and then I'm going to hit my control key and get the yellow. So that, that's the, the whole flower and the center of it. And then I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to right click and I'm going to group it back up again, just so that it doesn't come apart. So you can see it will stop because it's two colors, but that it helps me while I'm working with it so that it doesn't, you know, it doesn't move around. Okay. We're going to transform this. I'll, I'll make it just a little bigger. Um, let's see. Let's go back up here to the, the um, properties box. And I have to kind of scroll over to the right to get to the transform box. Okay. So right now it's not very big. I'm going to go ahead and move it to the, the height to one inch. So 1.0, I'm going to hit apply. Now, I, I decided I kind of wanted it square. So I just kind of pulled the side out of my flower just a little bit. I grabbed the, the corner down here. And I could have done it in the transform box too, but I just did it this way. So this is another way to do it. And then you can see that it changed the width. Okay. You don't have to do the, uh, the flower. You can do something else, Colleen. You can just leave it off. You can do something different. Okay, so I'm just going to pull this out till it's about an inch. Okay, so I'm a little bit off. So I can just take, go up here to my transform tab. I'm going to get rid of my maintain aspect ratio, though, and just make this one inch. So I kind of wanted it about one inch square and click apply. All right, so there's my little flower. So it's a little bit more square now. If you want to rotate it so it's a different shape, you can do that. Okay. But that's what I just wanted my little my little flower in there. And I'm just going to kind of put it in the point of my banner. Now, if you notice when I click my my applique here, I'm going to have to select all three pieces just to make sure they all move together. But if you see the nodes on the box around it, the center ones I have on my zero line. So I know that those are centered because remember, I centered my banner. So if I if I choose my banner, see how the center node is on the zero line here. So that helps me um, align it side to side. Okay, so let's check this little flower to see if it's centered. It looks pretty good. Might move it down just a smidge. So I'm going to use my control key and my arrow key just to move it down just a hair. I want to get it too close because we're going to put some, yeah, I think I might leave it up because we're going to put another line in here yet. So we don't, we might move it again later. Okay. All right, so, but I want it to, and, and I want to make sure that it sews under my applique. So I'm going to look at my sequence view to, to verify that everything's sewing in the order I have in my head. So, you know, we have our placement lines first, and then our tack down line for our felt. And then we're going to have the placement line for the S, the tack down line for the S, and then the applique for the S, and then the flower. So that's where I want that to be. Okay, so I have my order in the way I want it. All right, so there we, we're getting our base here. So now let's see, I got to go back on a different page here in a second. 
All right. So now I need to um, put another line in here that's going to hold my back to my front. And it's actually going to be inside the lines that we've already done. So there's a cool way to do that um, so that you don't have to try to draw it again. All right. So we're going to create an outline because you can create outlines inside or outside. So it doesn't have to be outside. It can be inside. So let's let's select step number two. All right. So I'm going to go so select step number two, which was our red um, outline. All right. And then I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to right click over here in my sequence view, right click. I'm going to go to utility, create outline. So I'm going to click on that. And then this little box comes up. Now I want the distance to be a quarter of an inch from that outside line, but we're going to go in instead of out. So I'm going to go, my distance here at the top is going to be 0.25 inches. So 0.25, quarter of an inch. I only want one repeat. I only need it one line. Okay. And then I want to go inside. So I'm going to go inside. And I don't want to unite the outlines. Okay. I want to just, I want one just inside. I don't want them to go together. I just want an inside line. So I deselected unite outlines. Okay. Then I'm going to click OK at the bottom. And look, we have a line. And that is going to be after the flower. And that's going to be our um, tack down line that's going to hold the front and the back together. Now that is going to be a different type of run. So right now, if you look over here in the sequence view again on that last piece, if we look at it again, it is now, it's still artwork. So we need to make it into stitching. Okay. So we're going to make that into a bean stitch because I want it to be like a triple stitch. That's what a bean stitch is. You, you could do that. Yes, Nancy. If you wanted to put a fancy stitch up there, you could. Remember that you might have to adjust then the size of your letter so that it would not sew over your letter or maybe your flower. Okay. You can do that. Yes. You would do that maybe with a motif stitch. So when we, when we do this, I'll show you the options you have. So I'm just going to select that line. I've got it selected. I'm going to right click and I'm going to convert to a run. Okay, so uh, Nancy was asking, you can have the type of standard, you can have the type two ply, bean, motif would be one that you could use that would be pretty, symbols, okay, now depending on what you have for software, you may have different choices here. Okay, so I have like all, almost all the software, so I have almost every choice available, but you may not have every single one. OK, but I'm going to use a bean because it's going to be a triple stitch. So I'm going to click bean and I want my length at 3.0. So I'm happy with that length. And I'm going to click apply. OK, so let's let's verify that we have stuff going the way we want it. We have our placement line for our felt. We're going to lay our felt down. Then we're going to do the tack down line for the felt. OK. Then we're going to do the placement line for our the letter S. We're going to do the tack down line for the letter S. And then we're going to do the satin stitch for the letter S. Okay. Then it's going to do the flower. All right. Then we are going to take the hoop out of the machine. We're going to, we're going to tape another piece of felt on the back. And you're going to change your bobbin thread to match your top thread. And then you would stitch out this bean stitch that would hold the two pieces together. Okay, so that's how far we are. We're doing well. Now, I did notice that my flower is a little too low. So we're going to move it up. I'm going to, I've got it selected here and I'm just going to bump it up a little bit with my, so it's not going to get sewn into that outline. I think that'll be good. There we go. Okay. So there is my basis so far. Let's see. So now we need something to put the, the ribbon through. 
and we're just going to draw a little eyelet. Okay. I was going to use buttonholes, but this ended up being so small that my buttonholes, they have a buttonhole tool in the software. If you look up here, it looks like a buttonhole, but it, they, they're kind of big for what the, I was doing here. So we're just going to use eyelets. So to make an eyelet, I am going to go up and get an artwork tool. Okay. And I'm going to grab the ellipse, which means it's a circle. And I want my ellipse to be a perfect circle. So I'm just going to draw a very small circle. I'm going to hold my control key down on my keyboard. And I'm just going to draw from the top left to the bottom right, just a small circle. I don't need it very big. Okay. And in this case, if you look, it's the same color as my other outline. So let's go ahead and get it changed into a different color. So let's do that first. I'm going to go get my selection tool. And then I'm just going to click on color number two. It doesn't matter what color it is. I just need it to be a different color than our bean stitch that we just created. So I just made my eyelet red. Okay. And let's see. Um, transform. So we're going to go to transform. Here's our little circle. Okay. And I'm going to make my circle 0.3 inches square. Well, boy, I was close. 0.31. So we're just going to bring that down. Whoops, I forgot to do maintain aspect ratio. So let's make sure we got it. I think it is. It's okay. And then hit apply. So it's 0.3 inches square, but it's round. So you, you know what I mean. All right. So that was page. Let's see. So I have to turn my page here in a second. All right. So I need these to be a steel stitch. What a steel stitch is, is a zigzag. Okay. So we're going to convert this little, because you can see at the bottom in our sequence view, it's still an artwork. Okay, so we're going to right click on it. We're going to convert to a steel. So that's going to make it satin stitches, even, you know, even satin, satin stitches. Okay, so I'll make it a steel. And then I need it to be pretty narrow. So the steel, we need to go back up here. We're in transform right now. So we're going to go back down to steel. The tab is a steel. And this will allow us to change the width of our steel stitch. And I'm going to make it pretty narrow. It's going to be two millimeters. Okay. Really about the smallest you should make a steel is 1.5. Um, if it's much smaller than that, it just will not sew. So two, and then I'm going to click apply and I'm going to check my size because I want to make sure that my size, um, and I left the inset at 50 because it's fine for this. But I'm going to go back to my transform part of my properties box here and just verify that I still need it to be 0.3 inches. So see, it made it bigger with the satin stitches. So we're just going to go ahead. I've got maintain aspect ratio here. And I'm going to go in and type in 0.3 again and click, and click apply. And so we have a very small, we don't need a very big eyelet. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to kind of pull this over into my um, design. So we know these are going to be kind of, you know, inside the inside the center here um, on the edge, on the right and the left edge. So I'm going to kind of get it oh, kind of even on the number two line here and the negative two line over here. So I think that looks about where I want it. OK, so let's kind of get it centered on there. That looks good. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to oh, I lost my spot. There we go. I'm going to copy and paste because we need a second one. I want it to be the exact same as that one. So we're going to go ahead up here. I've got it selected, copy and paste. Okay. So now we got two of them. They can be the same color. That's fine. So I'm going to grab one and pull it over to the other side. We're going to do the same thing over here on the negative two line. I'm going to kind of bump that around over so that it's like nicely lined up. Okay. And if you're not sure that they're, you know, level, you can select both of them. Okay, I've got them both selected now. And at the top, you can align them through the center. So here's the vertical alignment. So I'm just going to click that just to make sure that they're both the same in the same place on either side. Okay, and you can also tell that by the, you know, by your lines. So I'm using my negative two here and then the, the two line here right above the S. Okay, so that helped me get them lined up. So I think that looks pretty good. So there's our eyelets for our um, ribbon. All right. So it, we're done. 
it, we're going to have to make some other letters. So to do the other letters, it makes it easy. So what we're going to do, I've got my eyelets last. So that's going to sew last. And that will also have your matching thread in the bobbin. So the, the eyelets are through both sides. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and save this. So I'm going to go file, save as. Okay. And we're just going to call this, um, let's see, spring banner. I'm just going to save it on my desktop. Spring banner. And I'll just put the letter S. So that's what it was. And I'm just going to save it as a C2S because I want to show you how you can um, convert all of these at the same time. So you don't have to do all the saving. So I've got spring banner S on my desktop. Actually, let's make a little folder and stick them in there. I'll just put a little folder here that says banner. And then open that up and put them inside there. Okay, so I just put that on my desktop. So now we got S done. So now we're going to make all the other ones. So we're going to do the same settings as we did the other one, okay? Um, and we're just going to make the other letters. So in this case, I'm just going to go from where I, I am here. I'm going to go get my letter S. And remember, there's three pieces because we broke it up. I'm going to go get all three pieces. Whoops, wrong one. There we go. I'm going to get all three pieces. I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard. All right, so now let's go get the same letter in the letter P. So I'm going to go file, import TT text. And then this time my text is going to be the letter P for spring. So we're going to do SP. Okay, and I wanted that same font. So it's going to be Arial Rounded MT Bold. And then I'm going to click OK. And remember, we made it. I'm going to go back to my settings so I don't forget a setting. 2.5 inches tall. So we're going to transform the P to height, maintain aspect ratio. The height's 2.5. Click apply. So there's the letter P. Now, if you look down right now, it's in the wrong spot, but we're going to move it here in a minute. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and make it into, um, to make, make it into stitches. So I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to convert to, and this was an applique. All right. I'm going to go look at my applique settings. I'm going to use the same settings as I did for the other one. I'm going to use satin. My applique width was 4.0. My stitch length was 2.5. Um, bevel spine, I want a placement line and I want it to be a run. Now, this is the letter P. So there's a hole in the middle of this one, isn't there? So we do need to adjust the holes for the letter P and the letter R. Okay, so I'm going to click adjust holes for this one and I want it to change colors. All right. I want to inset it by 60%. So it's going to pull it in a little bit and I'm going to click apply. So there's my letter P. I'm going to pull that up so it stitches in the same place as the other one. So I'm going to go grab it right now. I'm just going to grab it with my left mouse. I'm going to hold it down. And I'm going to pull it up underneath the second run above the flower because I want it to sew in the same place. It will all, always put it at the bottom when you do this, okay? So then I'm going to go ahead and we're going to check the size again. I bet it needs to be resized a little bit. Transform. Yeah, so the height's a little high. So let's bring it down to 2.5. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to get this lined up where we wanted it. And remember that's the P is weird because it will visually look like it's a little bit to the left. But if you put it more to the right, then it looks too far to the right. So I'm just going to center it with the nodes on my on my grid and on the, the selection box. And I'm bringing it up so the top of it is a half an inch from the top, which is that first grid line down, just like we did the other one. Okay, so there's the letter P. Now we can break it apart if you want to. So if I want to right click so I can see it and break apart, it's gonna give me, whoops, second here. That's not what I wanted to do, let me back up, okay. I need to break up path, sorry. There's always two, break up path, sorry. So then I'm gonna look at it and I've got the P. There's the there's my, um, if you do break apart, it just breaks apart the two appliques because there's actually a two appliques in there because it's got the center, that makes sense. <laughs> break up path is what you want, sorry. And then, you know, here's our placement line for the P. 
here's our, ta our tack down line for the P and here is the satin stitch for the P. And we have all of our parts. So here's our flower. Here's the bean stitch line. And then here's the little eyelets at the end. Okay, so here's P. That was really easy, wasn't it? And let's make sure that we got it all lined up where we want it. I think so. We'll just select everything here. Yep, I think that looks good. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So let's save this one. We got this one. We're going to call this File Save As. We're going to call this Spring Banner P. So I'm just going to type in a different name. I'm going to put it back in that same little folder on my desktop and click Save. Okay, now we're going to do this again. Go grab the letter P. I'm going to select it. I'm going to hit Delete on my keyboard. Make sure you get all three of them. Then we're going to do the same thing with the letter R. So I'm going to go File. Import TT text. I'm going to type in the letter R. I'm using capital letters, by the way. I'm going to use Arial Rounded MT Bold, and I'm going to click OK. Then I'm going to go up to my properties box. I'm going to transform. I want the height to be 2.5. And again, we may need to adjust this again a little bit. Okay, so there's my letter R. I'm going to go to, oh, I need to right click on it because we need to make it stitches because it's just artwork right now. I'm going to convert to an applique. And then I'm going to choose my applique settings. I want it to be satin. The applique width was 4.0. The length of the stitch for the outlines is going to be, or for the placement and the tack downs is going to be 2.5. I need a placement line, so that's checked. Again, I need to adjust the holes because there is a hole in the middle of this letter. So I'm going to hit adjust the holes and change colors because I want it to change colors for each piece. And then I'm going to use the inset percentage of 60%. And I'm going to click apply. So there's our R. I'm going to check the transformation to make sure that it is the correct size. Transform. And see it's a little high, so I'm going to go ahead and change that back down to 2.5. And then we're going to move it up to where the other one was. Whoops. Have to get it selected. Move it up. Get it li lined up. My center node on the zero line. So we're going to move it over a little bit. And I want it to be on the line just below. So the half inch line below the top of the banner. I think that looks pretty good. So there's the R. Okay. So down here now, right now, it's going to sew in the wrong place, right? So we don't want it to sew at the bottom. We want it to sew after the second step. So I'm going to take, grab it, pull it up to the second step and drop it there. And then if I want to break up the path so I can see all the pieces, I can go right click, break up path, and then I can see all my steps for my design. And there's the R. Isn't that easy? So when you have the, the first part done, the, the first part was the hard part, then you just got to drop the right letters in. And I'm not quite happy. My, I need to go up a little higher on this one. So I'm just going to select these again. And I need to go up just a smidgen with this one. Okay. I think I'm happy with that. So there's our R. So I'm going to go File, Save As. And I'm going to call the Spring Banner R. So type letter R in there. And then I'm going to save it in that same folder. And you notice it's defaulting to my desktop in my little banner folder because that's the last time place we, we, we saved. So I'm going to click Save. All right. So let's do I. So let's just do all the letters. Does it, does it help you to repeat it so you can see what we're doing? So I'm going to select all the letter R. We don't need that now. We're going to hit Delete. And now we're going to go get our letter I. So I'm going to go to File, Import TT Text. I'm going to type in the capital letter I. And I'm going to get the font of Arial Rounded MT Bold and click OK. All right. And then I'm going to go transform it. I'm going to use 2.5 inches tall. So I'm using the height and my maintain aspect ratio is checked. So I'm going to go up to that, and there's my letter I, okay? And then we are going to go to 
right click on my artwork because remember this is just artwork when it comes in so we're going to make it into stitches so i'm going to right click on it i'm going to go to convert to applique and then let's go check the, the size again it's probably a little big see it, it gets a little big with the satin well let's 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 change the the sizes first and then we'll do that so the width is going to be a little wider so we might do that first we'll do that first and then the stitch length 2.5 okay i want a placement line now i do not have a hole in this one so i don't need to adjust the holes this time but i do want it to change colors and then i'm going to use inset of 60 percent i'm going to click apply so there's my eye we'll check the transformation to see the size and it needs to be 2.5 okay click apply now I'm going to move it up to where it belongs on that zero line with the half an inch below. Let's see if I hit it. I think I need to go down a little bit. And I think that'll be pretty good. So let's check the transformation, make sure we got the right size. That looks pretty good. Okay, got it centered. All right. And then I'm going to look down here because, you know, our eyes in the wrong place. We don't want it to sew there. We're going to grab a hold of that, pull it up underneath the second step and drop it right before the flower. And then I can right click on it and I can break up the path so I can see the parts. So there's the placement line, the tack down line and the satin stitch for that applique. All right. So there's the eye. So we're going to go file, save as. And then I'm going to call the spring banner I. Okay. Putting it in the same folder. And I'm going to click save. All right, we got two more to do. See, it goes real fast once you get going. All right, so we'll select these. Select the letter I. I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard. I'm going to go back up to file, import TT text. I'm going to type in the letter N. Get Arial. Rounded, empty, bold, and OK. I'm going to check my transformation. I'm going to go to 2.5 inches tall. All right. And then I'm going to right click on the letter N. And I'm going to convert to an applique. I'm going to go check my applique settings. I want it to be 4.0 wide. I want it to be 2.5, the stitch length, the placement line, I want it to be a run, the adjust the holes, there's no hole in this letter, so I don't need that. I am going to change the colors, and then I'm going to inset it to 60%, and I'm going to click apply. All right, so then I can kind of move this up to where I want it on my design, and I think we might need to check the size again. So let's do that quickly before we do that. Transform. So see, it's a little big, so we'll go 2.5. Click Apply. And then we can move it up to where we want it on our design. Control. We're, I'm, just, I'm just using those little arrow keys. That Control arrow key really works great when you're trying to just move it just a little bit. So I think that looks pretty good. So there's the letter N. Got that one done, so I'm going to go File, Save As. Oh, let's go ahead and break that up. We need to we need to do something else. We need to move it up. Sorry, forgot to move it up. We're going to grab it from the bottom, pull it up to below the second. If you drop it on the word Run on the second color, then it's then it's the third thing. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to break up the path again, so I can see the parts. So there's our placement line, tack down line, and satin stitch for the end. Now we can save it. So go file, save as, and then I'm going to say spring banner N. I'm just saving these as a C2S right now because I'm going to show you how to, we can convert all of them at the same time, okay, because it makes it really fast. So I'm going to hit save. So we can look over here in our, in our sequence view and we can see that everything's in the correct order. Okay, so let's get rid of the N. We have one more letter. Get rid of all the little pieces of the end, hit delete. And then I'm going to go back to file and import TT text. I'm going to go to the letter G. 
I'm going to go to Arial Rounded MT Bold and OK. So there's my G. I'm going to transform it. I am going to make it 2.5 inches high. And then I'm going to right click over here on my G, convert to an applique. And then I am going to change my applique settings on my tab. I have to get back to the applique tab. I'm going to make my applique width 4.0. I'm going to make my stitch length 2.5. I'm going to check to make sure my placement line is checked. There's no hole, so we don't need to adjust the holes, but we do need to change the colors. Okay. And then I'm going to make my inset at 60% and click apply. So there's my G. I'm going to go back up to transform to verify we have the right size. So it's a little bit big. Bring it down to 2.5. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and move this up and we'll center it in on our banner where we want it. Let's see. That looks pretty good. A little over this way. Okay. That looks pretty good. So there's our G. All right. And then I'm going to go grab over here in my sequence view, grab the letter G. We're just going to pull it up so that it sews the third thing. And then let's just break up the path so we can see it. Right click, break up path. All right, so there is the placement line, there is the tack down line for the G, and there is the satin stitch. Okay, so then we're going to go File, Save As, and I'm going to call the Spring Banner G. So there's all the letters. So once you get the base done, you can just make any letter you want. So if you like this banner and you want to make the word Happy Easter, just make the letters that you need. And then you can just copy and paste. You can just go in and you can take one out and resave it. So we're just going to make this the letter G. And we have all six done. Okay. So let me see. I have to find my, we got all the eyelets, got all that done. And then I have to find my next step here. 14, 15, got that, 16. Okay. I have like three diff different pieces of paper and... And uh, that, you know, that's the thing that's nice about you can just take something you already have and make something else. So we, we, we only had to make it one time. Now we have this banner. We can put anything in it we want. OK. And you just have to put things in the right order so they sew correctly when they go to sew. All right. So I want all of these also to be in a PES format. So when I go to sew it, you know, my, my machine will not read a C2S. The C2S... Yes, you can, Cindy. So if you have applique letters, you can bring them in. You can resize them and you can use those instead. Yes, absolutely. You just need to make sure in your sequence view that they are sewing in the correct order. Just so make sure you put them just like we did. We moved them up so that they would sew in the correct order. But yes, absolutely. You can use anything you want. And there are some applique fonts actually in some of the softwares. I did not use that tonight because not everybody has software that has applique letters like I do, but maybe not everybody else does. Okay. And yeah, so if you have applique letters you bought, you can use those too. That'd be great. That way, instead of bringing in um, what you would do to do that, Cindy, is you go file, import, I'm sorry, file, merge because you want to bring another embroidery design into the one you're already started. So use file merge to bring those in. All right. Instead of file open, it will just open them up on another, um, another screen, but just use file merge for that. Okay. All right. So I want to get all of these designs into a PES format so I can sell them. So I wanted to show you a little trick because when I'm doing stuff like this, like I do this very often because I, you know, I digitize some designs and then I need them in PES and HUS and BP3 and all that. So I use this feature a lot and a lot of people don't even realize it's here. So we have all these six designs. So instead of having to open every single one up again and saying, because you notice at the bottom down here, I only have one tab open because we've just been using the same design and resaving it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the batch conversion. And I love batch conversion. So it's under tools and it's called batch conversion. So I'm going to go down here to batch conversion. 
And I'm going to select the first thing it come, brings this box up and I'm going to select the file that's the source. So we know that file, I put all those C2Ss in because we need those working files because if I need to go back and fix something, I need the working file to do that. So I always save first as a C2S. So I'm going to select my folder by clicking on the little polka dots over here. And it's on my desktop and it's going to open up there because that's the one that that we've been using. So here's my desktop and then that little banner folder. Okay, so all six of these are right there. So this is where we're going to, um, these are the ones that we're going to be converting. So we need to select them all. So I'm going to click on the first one. I'm going to hold my shift key down and click on the last one. And then it will select everything in between. And I'm going to click open. Okay, so I've selected all six of those designs. If you have 40 designs, you can select all 40 at the same time to convert because it's really handy if you need to convert a whole bunch of designs. So let's say you bought a brother machine after having a Viking machine and you need to convert all your designs over. This is the way you could do it in the software. It makes it very quick. OK, then we're going to destination folder. I want them to be in the same folder. That's fine. So that automatically defaults to my same folder they're already in. I'm happy with that. And then I'm going to select at the bottom the format I want it. Now, my machine takes the PES version 9. Okay, so I'm going to put a check mark in front of PES version 9. Okay. And then I don't think there's anything else checked. But if you needed to, to convert, let's say you needed to convert to PES, HUS, and exp all at the same time you could collect all of them you could check all check all of those and it would do all of them at the same time okay so i'm just going to do pes because that's all i need for this one all right and you know there's all these different file folders now i have a lot of other ones not all the software has as many as i have because i also have a lot of the um the uh long arm formats as well. So there's a few that maybe you don't have on yours. Depends on the softwares that you have. But we're just going to use PES. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to click start at the bottom. It says six files out of six converted successfully. Woohoo. Okay, so we're going to hit OK. And then we're going to go, I'm going to hit cancel. And let's go what look in, in our folder and see how we did. So I'm going to minimize this for a moment. And I'm going to go to where my folder go. Here it is over here. OK, so here's my folder. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to go to view. So if you have um, the perfect stitch viewer, this is how you get the picture. So if you're struggling with that, go to, you know, open your folder where it is. I've just got my banner folder open. Click the little arrows if you have arrows there. And I need to go to view large icons. It has to be in icons, not details, because otherwise it's just little pictures. There's no pictures. So here's my pictures. So here's all my my font, my um, my design. So here is, if I hover, my embroidery design, the one that says embroidery design, that's the C2S file. If I go to the next G, it's a PES file. The first I is my C2S file. The second I is my PES file. So if you hover over it, it'll tell you what it is. Okay, so here's all of our files. So see, we got all of them converted all in one big swell, sw uh, big full swoop like that. Bam, they're done. Okay. So what did you think of the little banner? So let's let's talk about sewing it. I did write out some instructions for sewing. So I will put the um, the links again up so that you can find the sewing files if you don't have the software. Um, but let's, let's talk a little bit about sewing it. So let me bring the banner up here, picture of it. Whoops. I think I've got it up here twice now. There we go. So let's bring the, let's bring the, uh, the, the banner up. And so what I, and I, like I said, I wrote out, um, the, the cutting instructions and the, and the uh, sewing instructions for you. Um, so you need 12 six by six pieces of felt for the fronts and backs. Okay. So cut them six by six. You'll need 12 of those. You need six three by three fab pieces of fabric for your appliques. Okay. So just pick, I just picked six different colors. I thought they looked springy. So it was like pink, yellow, peach, purple, blue, and kind of a mint green. 
You'll need seven pieces of ribbon, about three eighths inch wide ribbon um, for the little ties. And then you need six water soluble stabilizers to fit a five by seven hoop. And these, this fits nicely in a five by seven hoop. Okay. So then for each one, you're going to sew out each one. Now, don't forget, like Jan almost did, don't forget to change your letters. Because remember, there's six different letters and it starts out exactly the same each time. So remember to change your designs when you're sewing. But you're going to hoop a piece of the water soluble stabilizer in the hoop. And then you're going to stitch out your placement line for the top felt. So that's what that first thing was. Okay. Then you're going to lay your felt down over the placement line. And then the second thing that's going to sew, step number two, will be the tack down line. Do not trim the felt, though, at this time. This will also be a final trimming line when the pennant is complete. So we're going to actually trim on that line when you're done because that'll help you trim the shape out. You just take your scissors and trim right on that line, and that's going to be the shape of your, your little pennant. The third thing that's going to sew will be the placement line for the letter applique. Then you're going to lay your applique fabric down. And then you're going to, the, the fourth thing is going to be the tack down line for the applique. And then you're going to trim close to the stitches. Okay. And then, oh, you need to make one that says laundry over the laundry. But, oh, that, that'd be cool. Yeah, you can make a banner for anything. And then it would at least be cute, right? It's just different. <laughs> Okay, and then the fifth thing, after you trim the letter, the applique letter, the fifth thing will be the satin stitch over the applique letter, okay? Um, Marianne, I do actually trim the letters in, th these are pretty simple shapes, so honestly, you could do these in the scan and cut, yes. And I can show you how to make an SVG file out of here, okay? I'll show you how to do it. You you need to leave your artworks in for your, um, your letters if you're going to do, if you're going to cut it. So what I usually do is I leave the artwork in. I don't, I copy and paste my artwork. All right. Um, then the satin stitch over the applique, and then it's going to sew the little flower and the center of the flower. So after the center of the flower sews, you're going to remove it from the hoop and you're going to place the other piece of felt on the back of it, of the back of the hoop. And I taped it in place. And then I'm going to return it to the machine. And the eighth thing that stitches is the triple stitch outline that we made one quarter inch inside of the, the, of the, the first outline. Okay. And then it's going to sew the little ribbon eyelets. And I made it stop in between. So if you want to change your colors, you can. I didn't change mine. I left my uh, bean stitch and my eyelets the same color. Okay. Then I'm going to remove it from the hoop. I'm going to trim along the outside stitching line. So that outside stitching line that we made, that was like a tack, tack down line as well. And then I'm going to dissolve my uh, water soluble stabilizer. So I actually dipped these in water. I took a, a tea towel and really patted them dry to, to get most of the moisture out of them. And then I took my um, styrofoam board that I showed uh, a few weeks ago on, on, um, Shields Live that, you know, we did the lace and I always pin it down. So I, I took my little banner pieces after I, you know, squeezed most of the water out of them, laid them down on my styrofoam and then pinned them down so they'd be nice and flat. And then I let them dry. Now, so they will take a little while to dry. So I let mine dry overnight. And then I took my crocodile, my little pun hole puncher, and I punched the little eyelets out with a small hole punch. And I also took an iron, I turned them upside down so that I was ironing on the back and ironed them nice and flat because they were just a little bit wrinkly. So I just took a steam iron and just gave them a little press and then mine are very flat and very um, stiff after using the, the water soluble. So that worked really well. So that's the sewing instructions, okay? And so Marianne, yeah, if you want me to show, does anybody want me to show you how to make the, if you want to do this with the, um, if you want to do the um, scan and cut, if you want to use scan and cut to do it. So I can hear, I got to get the right thing open. I've got too many things going here. 
There we go. Um, if you're going to use the um, scan and cut, you need to leave your um, your artworks in. So once the artwork is the right size. So usually what I do, if I've already gotten rid of my artworks, I'll just show you on here. I take my placement line. So the, the you know, in the, in the applique, the placement line is what I'm looking for. So that's the biggest line. Okay. So I'm going to take that line and I've selected it over in my sequence view and I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to paste it and it's going to paste it right below the other one. So now I've got the letter G two runs here and I'm going to right click on the second one and I'm going to convert to an artwork because for the, the software to make a, a uh, cutting file, it needs to be artwork. So I have to have that artwork there. So I would go then into all the other letters and I would take the first run, I would select that, copy, paste it, and then make it into an artwork. So that, that is not going to sew. It's just going to sit there, but it will make your, your cutting file. So once I've got that artwork there, I would go up to file and um, export artwork. So it's right, it's down on, in the file, export artwork. I'm going to bring that up. And now it's going to let me do, it says scalable vector, or in my case, if you're using a scan and cut, use this FCM because it's the native format. I don't really like SVGs in the scan and cut too well, because sometimes they, they group funny. So it's easier if it's an FCM. So I just go down to FCM. And then I can put it in that same banner folder. So I'm just going to open up that banner folder. And now see it's an, a scan and cut FCM. And I'm going to click save. And then I would do that with each letter. So I just have to go back and choose the placement line because that's the biggest line. Copy, paste, and then make it and then convert it to back to artwork again. So it's a piece of artwork. All right. Does that make sense to everybody? And then when I go back and look at that, my banner folder here, um, there's going to be one right here that says cutting file for scan and cut. And since I have the scan and cut software on my computer, it's actually going to show me a picture of that. So there's the picture of that file. And that will then cut the letter G on your scan and cut. Now, I did trim them because they are quite simple letters. Um, so I did trim mine, but I often do do letters. Um, I do, and then you can, and you can do this with any design that you open. So like any design that I would open in the software, if it has a placement line, I just go select the placement line in the sequence view. Even if it's a PES file, I can still make it an artwork. So if I select it, and then I, um, no, I don't actually, Marianne, I don't because I inset my applique. So normally I don't. If if I don't know what the digitizer's done, let's say that if um, it's an Anita Good Design and I don't know if they've inset it, then yes, I might make it a hair, like a bump. I'll, I'll hit the, the increase the size one time on the scan and cut. I do it on the scan and cut and not in the software. But I know I inset mine by 60%, so I know I don't have I don't change the sizes on my own cuz I know what size my um my placement lines are. So that hopefully that makes sense. But if you're if you don't know, then yeah, I but I ch and change it in um I change it in the machine. So I hit, I hit the the the, you know, bring it up an aspect ratio, maybe I hit it either one or two bumps and that's it. Because you don't want it to be too big because then you can see the, the fabric on the outside. Okay. So then I would do that with each one of my designs. You know, I go open, you know, I did G already and then I could go back and do my N. So here's my N. Bring that back open. And then I can go over here to my placement line. So there's the, the placement line for the letter N and I'm going to copy and paste. And then I'm going to convert that back to convert to an artwork. Okay. And now it's an artwork. And then I can go to file and 
export artwork, artwork, and then I'm going to make it an FCM because I have a scan and cut. Okay. And then in the same folder, and that's how I would just go back and do them. And if, if you know, you're going to do that for sure, um, you're going to cut them for sure when you're digitizing them. I just do it while I'm doing it, but I know not everybody has a scan and cut. So I just, I didn't do that. I just trimmed them in the hoop in this case. Okay. But that's how you do it. Okay. So what does everybody think of the banner? I thought it turned out very cute. I was very happy with it. Let me, let me stop the, the screen sharing here. So we can have our prize winner. We need to have a prize winner. Just a minute. Um, whoops, second. I got to hit the right button. Here we go. Stop sharing. There we go. Okay, now you can see me, hopefully. <laughs> have to look at the right buttons. I, I love software classes. This is like my favorite thing to do. And I just, and I, it's hard sometimes. They take me a little longer because, you know, I have to like, I have to come up with this, uh, you know, a design and then I have to digitize it. I have to sew it to make sure it's okay. And, you know, I sewed this one a couple times. Um, so I have two of them, but it's fun. Um, but I, this is like one of my favorite classes to do because I just love to digitize and it just gives me the reason to digitize. So, you know, and I can make some of, and it's very, like I said, it's very satisfying to sew out your own design. And at the end, it's like, Hey, I made that from nothing on the screen, you know, it's just so, it's so satisfying. And so I, I want everybody to use your software because it is really fun and there's so many things you can do with it. So, so I just tried, I've tried to come up with something fun every month. So, all right. So we're going to have a drawing. What do you think? We're going to, I've got my little, my little uh, uh, Doritos chip bag here. So, and if you're from away from here, um, make sure that, um, that you, um, uh, send me or personal message message me through Facebook your your email your or not your email but your mailing address so I can mail it to you and if you're close by you could just pick it up here at the store uh, either in Iowa City or Davenport I'll send it down to either of those stores so some some of the people are from closer by and they can just come pick them up so all right so this is going to be the prize all right so let me get my tablet over here all right we're gonna start moving the names around here. See if I can get a new name this week. Okay, it is Denise. Is it Offmuth? A U F M U T H. How do I pronounce it? Is that right? Offmuth? Offmuth? I'm not sure how you pronounce it. So Denise is the winner. Um, and if you are here, I think you are still, because I think you, you, um, you, commented a little bit ago, please send me, personal message me your your um, mailing address so I can send it to you in the mail. So I'll mail it first class. So so Denise, so it's Denise, A-U-F-M-U-T-H. Is it Offmuth? Offmuth? <laughs> it's really, it's hard to sometimes to know what people's last names are. So, so Denise, hopefully you're still here. I'm looking, trying to get down to the end of the the oh yes is that was that right off off -mouth? is that how you say it with the u yes okay cool all right so go ahead and in uh, uh personal message me through facebook your um your mailing address and i'll send that i'll send your little bag to you these are great for like um i use my i put my usb bees in here and i even the other thing they're good for is like headphones like little headphones and stuff so that's the kind of stuff I use in these little bags. <laughs> so anyway, they're fun to make. I've got a bunch, I've got a couple more of them in here to give away too. So, all right. So next week is Palm Sunday, isn't it? So we're going to have um, class next week and we're going to do the piecing on the May uh, Kimberbell Cutie. All right. And then on Easter Sunday, which would be the next Sunday, we're going to have that Sunday off. So we'll have a week in between the piecing and the embroidery on the cutie. Okay. Do you have a video to make the bag? You know what? I don't, Cindy. And I will do this. I'm going to do this on So Along With Jan. I just haven't done it for a while. So I need to practice. <laughs> I did this um, in, we had a club at the store called um, Dream Club. So when we had the dream machines, we made these on our dream machines. And I never had videos then. So that was before I did videos. I probably did these maybe 
five or six years ago. So I will make a vi We'll do this in so along with Jan and we'll make it. But I have to collect some bags too. The thing is with this, I don't eat a lot of chips and candy and stuff. And so I have to get some bags <laughs> to, to practice with so I can, then we'll, we'll, we'll do it together. So any chip tips or changes for the, oh, before May, before you get started, May was actually pretty straightforward, Jackie. Um, the one, yes, in the hoop, this is, well, no, it's not. I didn't digitize this to do it in the hoop. I actually did the quilting in the hoop, but then I did the um, sewing on the sewing machine. I just sewed them together, but but I've seen people do them in the hoop. So we could do it in the hoop also. Maybe we'll go another step and we'll do this in the hoop because we can. I can show you how to digitize the bag. That'd be kind of fun, so, okay. Oh yeah, your bike basket for little things. Yep. So you can use them, but I I have a couple other ones. I think I have a Panera chip bag <laughs> to in, in my little bag over there. I ate a lot of Panera chips because we used to be in a mall with Panera. So <laughs> I had a lot of Paneras, but I love Doritos. That's my favorite one. So I had some Dorito bags, but I'll have to go get some more bags. Yeah, in the hoop would be fun. I'll have to see how to do that. I haven't tried that. So I think we can do it though. I think we can do it. But I know I just sewed this on the sewing machine. So we may, may do it. I'm not sure which way we'll do it yet. So, all right. So next week, we'll go back to the Kimberbell Cuties and be watching for the um, Life is Better in Full Bloom uh, videos to come out. They should be, it should be a couple more days. I have two more videos to make and um, I will... I will get those uploaded and have all the, the comment in the descriptions on YouTube and everything. And also just so you know, YouTube, I've got a lot of subscribers. I was really surprised. So if you're not subscribed, I'm very close to 3000 subscribers. I I'm very pleased with that. I just kind of did YouTube as a help for you guys on, on Facebook, but I have 3000, um, uh, subscribers. So I'm very close to 3000. So if you haven't subscribed, go subscribe to get, to get me over 3000. I was about 10 short, I think. So, um, is full bloom a kit or one from you? The full bloom, um, life is better in full bloom is from, um, I put it up on the group, Jackie, if you go, um, just search the group for life is better in full bloom. And also on the shield sewing center website, this is when you get right from Kimberbell. And you go download this one and you can just use your own fabric. I just use my own fabric on mine. So, all right. So this, but this one's going to come out and it'll be just a video series. I just pre-recorded the whole thing and it'll be out probably in the middle of next week. I just need to finish a couple of videos yet. So I'll get it ready and then you can sew along if you want, or you can just watch the videos. So this has been a new one that came out the first of March and I really wanted to do it. So I had to get my taxes done first though. So I did that last week. So it's done. All right. So thanks everybody for joining me tonight and I will see you next week and we'll, we'll go back to Kimberbell cuties and do a little piecing. So thanks a lot, everybody. Have a good week. Bye-bye.